The author, essayist, and environmentalist Edward Abbey is quoted as saying, In the American Southwest, I began a lifelong love affair with a pile of rock. And we now find ourselves sharing the same opinion. In this week's installment of Fairwinds RV, we're bringing a little bit of the American Southwest to you as we make our journey through New Mexico and Arizona. We love this part of the country because the scenery is so absolutely amazing that it often seems like you're on a totally different planet. From the frequently mundane trek through the desert, where the landscape can rapidly shift from brown to red and then back to brown again, to the stunning mountain landscapes, and then right back into the desert again, you can find yourself in completely different worlds, literally within just a few short minutes. Whereas some areas reminded us of pictures of Mars, other areas reminded us of scenery from the Lord of the Rings. In this video, we're sharing just a few of our favorite places along the way. Arguably, Alamogordo, New Mexico is home to the nuttiest place on Earth and the world's largest pistachio. In Tombstone, Arizona, we witnessed the famous shootout at the OK Corral. So many pop culture images come to mind as you drive or hike through Saguaro National Park in Tucson, Arizona, which is home to more than 1.8 million of these towering tree-like cacti. And finally, at Karchner Cavern State Park, we found a scenic hike that proved to be a bit too much for Wicket. There is so much to do and see in this part of the country that we could spend an entire year out here and still not get to do everything we want. Adding to that, the awesomeness of the places we visited and sites we've seen simply can't be fully captured on film. However, we hope you enjoy this little bit we've put together. And stay tuned after this, because we're bringing you a quick update on our Starling system and part two of our RV must-have gear to get your camping on. Since our content is always geared towards you and what we think you'd like to see, leave us a comment down below with suggestions on what you'd actually like to see in the future. Likes and subscribes are free and easy for you, so if you haven't done so already, make sure to click on those like and subscribe buttons so the YouTube algorithm knows you're enjoying the videos. how long I can stand here and eat our pistachio ice cream until she gets mad at me. All right, well I was standing over there filming myself eating some ice cream. And I was like, I wonder how long I can stand here and eat this before she gets mad at me. So we're here in the Saguaro National Park today and we're on a pretty short trail. Jeremy had wanted to see the Saguaro cactus, cacti. So I did a little bit of research, because that's what I do. And so the Saguaro cactus takes about 150 years to mature. By the time they're about his size, they're about 35 years old. They don't get their first fruit until that point, so about 35 years. They don't get their first arms until they're between 60 and 70. So these ones that you see with a whole bunch of arms, they're pretty old. Older definitely than we are.
three mile loop trail today. But um, we're about a mile into it. And we've got a man down here. Wicked is not a trail dog at all. So we're gonna have to just turn around, cut this short, because we firmly believe in no pup left behind. All right, so here we are in Terlingua, Texas. I know, you've never heard of it. I hadn't heard of it either till a couple of days ago, but it's right outside of Big Bend National Park, which is the whole purpose of coming here. This park that we got into, Roadrunner, I don't know, Roadrunner something, Roadrunner RV Park. I don't know, um, but it's pretty cool. It's got some hints of where we were last fall out in Utah at uh, Dark Sky Campground. So uh, this is another Dark Sky area, so the uh, stars should be out pretty good tonight. I don't know, we'll see what it looks like. But we just got all set up. Um, I'm about to do a test on the Starlink to what we get down here. I don't ever really pay any attention anymore to whether we're in an official Starlink area or not. You know, it doesn't really matter. We're RV in it, we're all over the place. So wherever I am, whatever service I can get, uh, I'm happy with but I would say that uh, so far it's been pretty good everywhere we've been I haven't had any issues with it obviously a big storm passes through something like that we will pretty much completely lose the internet you know at that point there's really not much you can do we turn on our hot spots do what we can do but at that point you know there's not really a lot that you can do about it so anyway get ready to do a test here and let's see what we come up with all right there she goes so hey look at that not too bad uh, holy crap 40, 50 something, I don't know, I don't have my reading glasses on, but it looks like 50 something, maybe close to 60 on the down. And let's see what we get here on the up. It looks like about, I don't know what that says, 13-ish, 12-ish. So hey, you know, that's not too bad for being in an area that I think, you know, actually I don't know whether it's approved by Starlink or not, but uh, you know, like I said before, I've never really uh, had a complaint about Starlink yet. And um, it looks like this area is pretty good. We're only about 10 miles from the border of Mexico. It's about 10 miles to the southwest of us. So we're pretty far south here. You know, while I was here, I wanted to kind of give you guys a, a little bit of an update on um, this whole Starlink thing and what I did with it. You guys saw me tear apart the underbelly to reroute my cable that goes from the modem to the Starlink. And it's been working out really, really well. So I just wanted to share that with you about how I got that cable to go from the inside to the outside and never have to move it again. So basically what I did was uh, we have an, a rear entertainment center in our living room. And I knew that there was a spot behind the speakers where there was just this void back there and some cables were already coming through the floor uh, going into the underbelly. So I figured why not make that hole just a little bit bigger, stick my Starlink cable through there and then route it outside. So that's what I've done. It basically goes through the floor in the living room in that speaker void area, uh, goes down into the underbelly and then comes out of the underbelly and then I just routed it up through the pole that I made for this last fall when we were in Port Aransas, Texas. I made a little pole, I bought the adapter from Starlink and you know that's worked out well so now I've got my cable running out from the underbelly and up through that pole so all I ever have to do is just detach that dish from the top when we're ready to get underway that wire just kind of hangs out up there I put a little baggie over it in case it rings but that's about it and it's worked out really well for us all right guys so now let's get back to the topic of the RV essential must-have gear and we're talking about gear that you absolutely need to get that camper out into the campgrounds for the first time so if you watched our last episode then you know we already covered all of the electrical gear so the shore power cable the extension cable the surge protector all of that good stuff so this week what we're going to talk about is all of the freshwater gear that you're going to need you're going to want fresh water while you're there whether that is bringing it in from the city or maybe you fill your tanks up ahead of time but this is the gear that you're going to need to make all of that happen now again keep in mind we're only talking about the absolute minimum gear that you need so let's head outside and take a look at all of this freshwater gear that you're going to need all right the next part of this now is going to be getting all of the fresh water hooked up and then we'll go into all of the septic stuff so the first thing we'll do here again is we'll just go through the things that you need and then we'll kind of walk through getting everything set up um, so the first thing that's going to be really important is getting yourself uh, a water filter it doesn't have to be a fancy one this is just your basic inline water filter so basically all this does is it connects between your water hose 
and your rig, or it's gonna connect between the actual faucet itself and your water hose. Either way you wanna do it, it doesn't really matter as long as you have this in line. You can't really screw this up because there are arrows on it, right, to tell you which way the water flows. So if you're gonna hook this up to the faucet, then you would hook it up with this side on the faucet the arrow flows down this way and then you hook your hose up to the bottom and then run your hose over to your city water connection on your RV. Again, it doesn't have to be a fancy filter, uh, but you do need to have a water filter because some of these campgrounds have some pretty nasty water. All right, I'm not actually going to hook this up. Uh, I think you guys get the idea on this. It's just a basic inline water filter. Uh, and the reason I'm not going to hook it up is because I have a fancy water system. We're kind of uh, water snobs around here. So I've got a triple filtration system with a water softener and you don't need to watch me hook that up uh, but that's why I'm not gonna hook this one up uh, here okay so now what we have is just an assortment of hoses that you see laid out here um, and I've got them separated out into three different piles so the first pile you see here I've got my freshwater hoses I don't ever put anything except fresh water through these hoses ever 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 I don't ever substitute it for a black tank flush hose you don't want to do that because you're gonna get sick if you do just trust me on that one not from personal experience uh, but we actually have read on Facebook where somebody used their freshwater hose for some septic stuff and everybody in the family got sick so let's not do that right then uh, the next hose here that I use this is my black tank flush hose uh, and that's the only thing I use this for. I don't use it for anything else. I don't use it for my fresh water ever, ever, ever. I don't use it to wash the truck, nothing. It's solely for black tank flushing. And then I have a third hose over here. It's just a cheap spare hose that I keep on hand. This is the one that I normally wash the truck with. If I need to rinse anything off, if I'm washing the rig, this is the hose that I use for all of that. Okay, so another type of filter that you may have instead of this inline water filter that I was showing you is it's a different type of inline water filter. It's, it does the exact same thing but this may just be permanently attached to your rig or semi permanently attached to your rig so mine is permanently plumbed in here you can see it's screwed into the wall and everything uh, but I, I don't use this one because again I have that triple filtration system but basically what we have here I'm not going to open it up because it is still full of water what I did was I just took the normal filter out of here so the water basically just comes in and goes right back out but you may have this type of filtration system already set up in your RV and if you do then all you need to do is just buy the type of filter media that fits inside of here and I'll try and find you a link uh, for an example there so all you need to do is just install all that filter media inside of there put the cap back on there and you're good to go so what I want to point out with that is is if you do have this type of filter system then you're gonna need a water filter wrench. And for those of you who are buying a used RV, or maybe even if you're buying a new RV, you wanna make sure you have one of these that your RV comes with it, because if it doesn't, then you're gonna be stuck without one, or you know, at least you know you need to go to Walmart and pick one up. So this is your water filter wrench, and it just slides on here just like this, and uh, you give it a turn one way or the other, and you can get that, that housing off so that you can replace your water filter. So this isn't a physical thing that you need, but I just wanna point out here that that you, you gotta know how all your systems operate as well. So as you can see in here, I've got some knobs and switches and stuff, and I'm not gonna go into the operation of that. It's beyond what I wanna do in this video, but I do wanna point out that you gotta know how that stuff operates, especially if you're gonna do like some boondocking and you wanna fill your freshwater tank, you gotta know how to make that fresh water get into your tank. So keep that in mind as we kind of walk through some of this stuff, uh, the different systems, you've gotta know how those systems operate. Okay, the next couple of things we're gonna talk about here is a two-way splitter for your water connection right so mine's actually it looks like somebody forgot to bring theirs or maybe the, the campground does this i don't know if, but it's already got a two-way splitter on it so i'll probably just use it uh, or maybe i'll put mine on there and then i'll have three so the reason you want one of these two-way splitters is because one of these is going to be your fresh water connection and then the other one's going to be for your black tank flush because what you're going to want to do when you pack up and leave let's say you've been you know you've been out for the weekend you've all been using the bathroom in there you're going to want to flush that black tank before you leave and the only way you can do that well it's not the only way but the way to do that is you have two hoses one's going to your city water connection and then the other one is going to the black tank and I'll walk through how to connect that stuff up at least on my rig here in a little bit so you can get the gist of what I'm talking about so the two-way splitter make sure you have one of those I always recommend if you can getting the brass ones because they just last longer they're not gonna break as easily as the plastic ones will I went through a couple of plastic before I finally broke down and brought, bought a brass one so 
if you can just get a brass one any of these you know water connections that you that you're gonna buy just get brass ones if you can right off the bat all right the second thing that I'm holding here is a water pressure regulator some campgrounds man their water pressure is super super high these things I think are only rated somewhere in the range of about 45 to 50 pounds of pressure inside so if you get into one of these campgrounds and they're 70 or 80 pounds you could have issues inside with plumbing joints coming apart and you don't want that because then you're gonna flood out your RV so make sure you get a good uh, pressure regulator this is kind of the fancy type I'll put some links below for this one and some of the more inexpensive types but make sure you have a good water pressure regulator all right so that's kind of all of the pieces and parts the basic pieces and parts that you're gonna need to go out you know your first couple of times in your own RV so now what we're gonna do is just kind of walk through setting all of this stuff up and then probably in post editing I'm gonna fast forward through this a little bit but you'll get the gist okay so this is the point where if I had one of these inline filters what I would do is I would just connect this on here um, I would actually I would probably manipulate this so that it, it just points down so it's not hanging out here uh, but this is where I would put my inline filter here and then my hose would go here from the filter to the RV so that's just how I would do it if I was using this filter Okay, so just like in my power cord, I always like to put as much of this in the shade as possible because especially in places like we are today in New Mexico, um, it's gonna be pretty warm. And if you want cold water, you're not gonna be able to get it unless you put as much of this in the shade as you can. Okay, again, so uh, we like fancy water. So what we've got here is a triple filtration it's got three filters on it. They all kind of do different things. Not really gonna go into that right now. And then we have a small water softener that we use so that we have, you know, soft water. It's just good on appliances. It's better for your dishes all the way around. Water softener is just really the way to go. This is just a bag of goodies that I keep standing by as you can see here i've got some quick connectors on here for the connections that i make and break most often and then i just keep a little baggie here and number one it's got some instructions on it for my uh, water softener for some special procedures but then it's just got you know i got another two-way connector in here and then some other you know just you know quick connects and stuff so i, I just keep a bag of goodies sitting by just in case you know i hook something up and it leaks and then you know i can just i got it sitting here and i can just toss a new one on there These two contraptions here, again, not the point of this video. This is gonna be another video down the line, but you're gonna see me putting this on, you're gonna wonder what it is. Uh, what I have here is I have a water meter, right? It's just the digital water meter goes in line with, uh, with the whole system. And then I actually have a, a smart valve here that I can use to remotely turn my water on and off and I can hook it up to Alexa or you know a Google Nest or something like that and do all kinds of crazy stuff with it I just wanted to explain what that was so you're not wondering what the hell is he putting on there this smart valve that I have on here if you guys are wondering what that's all about I do have another video on it it's uh, called a rain point water timer it's not really made specifically for RVs uh, but it does exactly what I need it to do and it really prevents me from forgetting to turn the water off when I leave for an extended period of time so having said that that water meter and that remote control valve that's something that's nice to have you don't really have to have that just to start out RVing you can just come out here and turn the water off yourself that's not really something you need to have to you know to get out and get underway and start your camping All right, so I've got everything hooked up now the way I need it. You know, I've got it coming out of the faucet, going through my pressure regulator, into my water filter, and then through my water softener, and then into my rig. So everything's hooked up. Uh, now the only thing I need to do is just turn on the water, look for any leaks. So what I normally do is I turn this water on, I look for any leaks, but I run just, you know, maybe three or four gallons through the whole system into my freshwater tank, 
uh, just to get any kind of stagnant water or anything that might have been you know settled in there or gotten in you know maybe one of my hoses it's just going to go in the freshwater tank and then i just completely uh, empty my freshwater tank later and then i just kind of flush it out just a little bit but the whole goal here is to just get you know any stagnant water or whatever that was sitting in any of these components get it into the freshwater tank and then just get rid of it instead of sending it inside to the rig I'm not going to bore you with anything past this, I think, because we've got it all set up. Everything that we connect outside, everything that you need, the minimum, the bare minimum that you need to get underway the first time. Or again, like I said, if you're just going to stay in your own driveway, these are the things that you're going to need when you're out there. And so what we'll do is, you know, again, we'll throw in some links uh, to some other products that may be cheaper or just maybe a different variation of the things that I talked about, just so you have some options for whatever fits your specific needs and whatever fits your specific RVs. A lot of these things do the exact same, you know, the concept of them is the same. It's just that maybe they connect a little different. Maybe they operate just a little bit different based on the type of RV you have. But again, these are the basic freshwater components that you need. All right, so now we've covered all of the basic electrical, all of the basic freshwater things that you need to get out there and start camping. So in our next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the final two categories, which are going to be the septic items that you need, along with really just kind of some miscellaneous items that don't really fit into any one category. So that's going to be in our next episode. Make sure you look out for that. And while you're at it, if you like this video, if you got anything out of it, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so that you're notified when our new video videos come out. Subscribing to our channel doesn't cost you anything, but it really lets us know that you guys are enjoying what we're putting out. And then the final thing here would be to let us know what you guys want to hear about. And that's what we're here for is to provide the content that you guys want to see, what you guys want to learn about. So just get in the comments down there and let us know. Give us ideas for topics that you'd like to see us cover in the future. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thanks for watching guys. And again, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in the next one.